I remember being fairly excited to get my copy of Parasol Henbei. The information I got before I bought it made it look like a quirky little platformer. Something right up my alley. When I got it, I popped it in, played for a few minutes, and went, yeah, this looks fine. And then set it aside until I got around to this episode. Well, now that I've really played it, I get why this isn't a popular game. It's pretty rough. Parasol Henbei started out as a comic by Fujiko Fujio, the creator of Doraemon. It was part of a whole trend of late 80s, early 90s comics and cartoons for kids about magical creatures from another world coming to Earth and having to stay there, becoming friends with a group of friendly Japanese school children. The comic and cartoon ran simultaneously, and they had just completed a few weeks before this game came out. This is the final Famicom game from former console manufacturer Epoch. They will continue to make Super Famicom and Game Boy games, though, mainly driven by the fact that they had an exclusive license to make games based on the works of Fujiko Fujio. They make a lot of Doraemon games throughout the 90s. In the game Parasol Henbei, Henbei's friend has been kidnapped, and so he journeys through the land of dreams to get him back. As you might expect from the title, Henbei's primary weapon is his parasol. Ironically, Parasol Henbei was released on the exact same day that another video game about a parasol-wielding hero was released. Though that hero's game doesn't make it to the Famicom, even though the hero will. Henbei swings his weapon kind of ineffectually to attack, unless you collect these parasol icons. In which case, he shoots a rainbow when you hit B. The rainbow doesn't have much range either, but it's a lot better than the parasol. You can't just fire it willy-nilly though, because the ammunition is limited. You can also hit up and B to bring out the parasol, and that will let you float downward when you jump. Hitting down and B while you're in the air will put the parasol beneath you, and that can be used to damage enemies, destroy some of the single blocks that you very occasionally find laying around, or, most importantly, use it as a boat. While Henbei can't swim, he can't jump out of the water very well. So if you can manage to jump out, put the umbrella underneath you, then you can get some additional height with your jump. You can also press down while you're walking around and duck underneath the umbrella. You can't be hurt while you're underneath it. If you hit select, Henbei enters dash mode, and he'll run in whatever direction you press next. Dash mode ends when you press in another direction. Parasol Henbei does one of the worst things you can do in a video game. The controls are absolutely terrible. Take sprint mode, for example. If you press select while you're moving, then it doesn't work. It's already cumbersome to use, but now they've made it feel more unresponsive. And trying to jump out of the water and get your umbrella underneath you is a nightmare. The distance that you jump out of the water is variable, and often you only have a split second to get the umbrella out. You also can't put away the umbrella after you've taken it out to float. You have to attack to put it away, using up some of your ammo. And then there's the strangest feature of Parasol Henbei. The age setting. When you start the game, you're asked your age. And what answer you give changes the difficulty. If you're between 10 and 25, the game is set to the hardest difficulty level, giving you the fewest number of lives, the smallest health bar, and locking up some of Henbei's abilities. If you're between 0 and 5 years old, or over 35, then it's set to the easiest difficulty level, giving you 99 lives and maxing out your health bar. And everyone else gets the medium difficulty, where you have 9 lives. If you're playing on the hardest setting, you can get some things back. There are doorways on the stages that you can enter, and inside them you can find this ice cream parlor, where you have the ability to buy additional charges for your umbrella, or improve your abilities. You get cash to spend when you defeat enemies, or by collecting the coins that are scattered everywhere. Other things you can find indoors are this rat that will just refill your health, this prize game where you pick one of three doors, and you could get money, more parasol charges, or nothing. Or you might find a hotel where you can spend the night to recover some health, and have a checkpoint there for when you die. And you are going to die a lot. The stages are extremely long, the hotel is typically the only checkpoint, if you can find it, and enemies have a bad tendency to suddenly pop out at you. The bosses can be even worse, since Henbei's attack is so pathetic, 
For any that are in an action segment, the best thing you can do is hide under your parasol until you can take one attack, and then hide back underneath it. Some of the other bosses, however, are mini-games. Like this guy, where his rock-paper-scissors throws are all shown on the screen very briefly, and then you pick what you're going to throw. Or this, which is a memory game, but you're trying to build your face before your opponent builds theirs. The level design in Parasol Henbei is not great. There's this tendency to put in traps that are there solely to annoy you. Like this catapult at the very end of the stage, which sends you back to the very beginning of the stage. It's like they were doing everything they could to make this game not fun. There is a password system. It'll take you back to the appropriate level with your difficulty setting. In Japan, the Parasol Henbei Famicom game is best known for being kind of hard to get, but also not really good. The kind of game that you'd only pick up if you were building a complete Famicom collection. I feel like this game is one of those that looks better when you're watching a video than when you're actually playing it. It looks like a pretty good platformer where you've got some interesting moves, and there's these big levels, but then you play it, and you're dealing with 10 minute long levels that only have one checkpoint, and controls that might be politely described as sluggish, and before you make it through two stages, you'll be ready to put this one down forever.